hi and welcome back to another video i know i owe you all so many videos so there's been a lot going on we've been trying to you know move relocate to our new place and it involves you know so many things parking and and lots more so that's how come i haven't been able to do so many videos lately however i'll try my best to cover all the videos that are left to um, be recorded um, that is the biodigester the sugawi pits the plumbing works the cabinets the doors and everything the, I'll, I'll try and cover them all so today's video i'm going to be focusing on the soak away pits as well as the biodigester which has been completed so the very last time uh, we covered this was when the pits had been dug and then the blocks were being laid so i'll take you through from what had been done from there to the its final um state so let me just show you this is the final state of the um, biodigester pit so this is the biodigester and then this is the soak um so can we pit so uh yeah you notice that the sukawi pit is slightly bigger than the biodigester and then that is also a little bit um deeper than the biodigester now let's look at um what went or what has gone into it so far so for the um the sukawi pit we plastered the inside of it um yeah uh the down has been concreted or it was concreted before even the blocks they started laying the blocks so as after that the installation of the pipes to the side which i spoke about in a different video we did a plastering of the inside and then did cast concrete on top so casting the concrete on top requires you to put some wood underneath or nail some wood and then um you secure the sides of it put uh, steel in it or iron rods in it so the size of iron rods we use were 11.5 mm and then we had eight pieces of that so the steel banner tie that placed it in a form of a mat on top of the wood and then we went ahead to um, cast the concrete so custom or doing the concrete works we had to leave space in the middle which is going to serve as like an entrance to the hole so we did a slab for that that has that's the cover on top so we did that separately and then after everything dried we placed that on top so after the concrete also went ahead to plaster the sides of it and then went ahead to do screening on top to have a bit of slopey so once it rains on top of it it doesn't force its way in it will probably just um, go away from it and then went ahead to place the cover on top of it which also has um, mortar underneath it now when we chose this way with the cover as compared to the ones that is placed in it because whenever there is a need to open it with the ones that is placed in it you have to break the edges the motor on the edges and sometimes the more you keep breaking it affects the step that is constructed inside so this is just on top of it once you need to remove it you just have to take away the motor underneath it lift it up and you're good to go and if you need to put it back just put some slight motor on it and then put it back and you're good to go so that is for the soccer we pit now after that we went ahead to also do the biodigester so just as we plastered the inside of the soccer we pit we did take for the biodigester and went ahead to do screening on the floor on the ground and then directed the sloping into the soccer we pit so the idea is once the sewage into the biodigester it goes through the processes it has to go through the liquid that comes out of it, it directs it into the Sokawi pit and then once the Sokawi pit gets to the level of the pipes it begins sinking into the soil so that is basically the idea behind that now after the plastering of the biodigester pit we went out to do the slab so we didn't do concrete on top of the biodigester instead we did slabs on top so for the slabs just as we did with the Sokawi pit we used the iron rod mat we tied it in the form of a mat the size that we wanted and then the mason went out to do the concrete so with the biodigester also we installed a clean out so a clean out is this white let me just show you this white um plumbing material which can be opened so if you need to open it to take a peep it's a bit I, I can unless i need a lot of uh, force to open it so if you want to open it to take a peep on what's going on um inside just to make sure things are going the way it has to be you can just open the ticket peep and if there's a need to open the entire then you just take away the mortars that are put on the edges and then be able to open it and then do whatever you need to do so that's what 
was done now let's go ahead to take a look at the processes with the biodigester so as you noticed um, in some uh, video i did speak about the first layer of block which was put in the side way to be able to get a step once the others were constructed so that was done in aid of um, once we are putting the materials that we need to be put um, to put on top of uh, the, the, the uh, as part of the biodigester process there are materials a couple of materials you put inside before you put in the fiber so we're going to do the installation of the fiber and the materials we have here uh, this uh, coated mesh and then the treated coconut husk we have a leftover from this also uh, fiber is it fiber yeah i think it's fiber yeah so a leftover fiber from the the installation of the plaster for the corner molding so we spread it on top of this and there's also fiber nets which we'll be using as well we'll also be using some bricks here which is going to help raise the floor to spread the fiber on top of it so i'll take you through the process so one of those materials is a uh, uh, fiber net as as well as a uh, mesh net or mesh which you place on top of it so let's walk through the process so doing the biodigester installation we made good use of the step over there however we needed to raise it a little bit so we put some slide blocks we use some of the design blocks that we got to raise the platform and then place some in the middle because of the distance or interval so that it doesn't sink and then the first layer of material we placed in was the mesh that is the mesh coated mesh so we place that in we bought two yet so we folded it so it becomes a bit stronger so we place that in and the next material that goes after that is the fiber net so we place the fiber net on top to be able to um, prevent you know um, solid or any other materials to go into it so all we want is to sieve the liquid so it just it's just going to be liquid which is dropping in and then going to the sukari pit so after the fiber net went i to place in um the pop fiber so we had some left from the pop or the plaster board works with it that is a corner molding so we went i to place that on top also helping with uh, sieving of materials and then after that we went i to place in the fiber so this is a um, coconut treated coconut husk that is known as a fiber so it has been treated that contains some microorganisms that feed on feces once there's introduction of feces so we went i to place that on top that was the final layer and then as we already had pipes that is a four inches pipe coming out which is going to allow the um, sewage from the house into it and then the three inches or two inches pipe which is in between the soccer pit and then the biodigester that is going to allow water or liquid from the biodigester into the soccer pit so after the last layer which is the treated coconut husk or the fiber went i to seal the top of the um, biodigester considering that we had already done the plumbing work so i'll share with you the plumbing works because it involves a lot or it did involve a lot so that will be in a different video so this is basically talking about the biodigester completing the biodigester and then so carry pit so that's the process we went ahead to you know complete this part of the entire uh, project now a few things you need to know with regard to buy digester is that in as much as it saves uh, or it is known to save cost as compared to the traditional um, pit or manhole that is being used you ha you have to oblige by certain rules to be able to save that cost one of those um, rules has to do with not introducing any foreign materials aside feces into the pit so that means that if you are using the wc whatever um toilet system they are using you need to make sure ensure that there isn't um, t rules uh flashing of t rules wipes and you know those foreign materials as part of because the idea is that these microorganisms only feed on feces they can't feed on these so if you have more introduction of that into the system it is going to um, take them away or kill them off and it's going to affect the entire system so you end up having your system being food because um, you're not you know implementing that so that's one of the things also 
you don't have to use high um, detergent um, in cleaning your toilet bowls and the rest. Um, the idea is that this detergent kills the microorganisms. So they are uh, specifically designed or made um, detergents which are used or bio-friendly or eco-friendly which can be used for that. So you can get, uh, there are people who do sell some, so you can get that to be able to clean your toilet bowl when you have to. And also you need to make sure that wherever you be constructing the biodigester isn't a waterlogged area, else you might and are facing challenges of water always finding its way into the system too much water causes the whole you know solution to be bogus because it goes out to affect the entire solution as well as you should also make sure that you are not directing any other wastewater or waste into it so aside sewage you shouldn't be directing your bathroom water into the biodigester it's not going to help as well as you shouldn't be directing your um kitchen waste water also into the biodigester that is also not going to help so the biodigester is specifically made for sewage all that should be coming into it as should or should be sewage aside from that nothing else should be coming into it so that is basically with regard to the um, installation of the biodigester and the soakaway pit um, now let's go into the materials the quantity of materials we use as well as the total cost uh, involved so the total cost for everything was four thousand four hundred and forty four and out of that um, 2,224 went into um, labor sorry went into materials and then 2,020 cities went into labor so the materials we used we use uh, five inches blocks about 130 pieces of that we use about um, about eight to ten bags of cement not so sure but that was the range of cement we also used 10 um, waterproof cement the idea or the reason with regard to the waterproof cement was we had some challenges when we started because it had it was raining during this so we were having frequent rays and it ended up getting you know there was soil to be very wet which was bringing some soil and um, water out of the soil we couldn't wait for a long time so we needed to improvise that was how come we use waterproof cement to prevent the water from coming into the system that was during when it was raining so that was the idea to the waterproof cement and then we also um, use iron rod eight pieces of 11.5 mm and then aside from that also let me see what other materials we used so we also used pipe two inches pipes that was going into the um, the walls or the blocks just as you saw in uh, one one of the videos I made and then as well as uh, or as part of that we use coated mesh for the biodigester we use fiber net we use the fiber itself or the co uh, treated coconut husk and then um, POP fiber that's not mandatory so that we decide to adapt that to it so basically these are the materials that we use for the fiber we use one sack of it it's mostly best you get more but um, from what I got, it was okay to do the job. So that is um, just about it for this video. In case I haven't tackled anything with regard to this, you can draw my attention to it in the comment section and I'll try my best to cover it or cover more of that in different videos. So I'm going to end this video here. And in my next video, I may be talking about the plumbing works or maybe the cabinet or the doors. I'm not so sure yet, but I'll be talking about one of these. and. Um, in subsequent videos we'll talk about more and then of course the very final or grand video which will be the overall total and then break down of all that went into or that has gone into this project so thank you very much for watching in case you are new to this channel and you haven't subscribed yet kindly go ahead and hit on the subscribe button and then don't forget to hit on the bell so that anytime i have a video a new video you get to see it. so once again my name is Ashmalamte. i'll see you in the next one